The M2 Max MacBook Pro, I've had some problems with it. There's some great things and some bad things. We are going to get into that today. Let's go. Okay, it's been one week. I've had this one week and I've used it every single day. I've edited uh, four videos, I think. I've edited a bunch of photos and I've run Pro Tools on it a bunch. I wanna share with you guys the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're gonna talk about if this is actually a good machine. Is this a good purchase decision? Let's start with the good first. Now, the most impressive thing about this is obviously its power. Uh, editing videos in Final Cut Pro is just, it's a dream. Like zero dropped frames, when you make edits, they render out like almost instantaneously in a lot of cases. It's so fast and so powerful. The screen is great for color grading and for editing photos. It looks awesome. And after one week, the 14 inch is definitely my favorite size. It has the perfect like physical size to screen size ratio. I just, I think the, perf the 14 inch is perfect. The SD card reader is wonderful. It is the minimum number of IO and ports that I think is necessary for it to be a pro machine. But when I set this up and I plug an external monitor into it, full size HDMI, and I plug a couple hard drives into it and I'm charging it at the same time, plug an audio interface into it, I can run all of that without needing any dongles or anything extra. Good stuff. Let's talk about the bad. Now in my previous videos on this, there is one theme that would just ran through the comments and that was how hot this runs. Apparently there's been some other creators here on YouTube talk about how hot these get and how it could potentially be a problem. So first, yes, it definitely runs hotter than the old M1 MacBook Pro, but it's also in some cases four times more powerful. So, you know, that power comes at the cost of heat and power consumption in just about all cases. Now that said, after rendering and editing a bunch of videos on this, I have yet to hear the fans, so they're, they're either so quiet that I can't hear them or they've never kicked on, one of the two. But I think we kinda just got spoiled with the original M1 laptops because they were really powerful, especially compared to the Intel options at the time, and they didn't get hot like at all. I don't think this gets any hotter than the old Intel laptops that we used to have just a few years ago. Now, granted, I haven't put it side by side with the latest Intel laptop, but like as far as heat goes, it feels like it's about the same level of heat as the last generation uh, Intel computers that we used to have. Now, I will say the cooling vents on this are very interesting. There is a slot right here and there is a slot right there and that is the intake and the exhaust of the cooling. And those are pretty big wide open slots. So when it's on a hard surface, you, you don't really notice the heat nearly as much. If it's on a soft pillowy surface, if you're laying in bed and it's on top of your comforter, uh, if you've got a pillow on your lap on the couch and it's on top of the pillow, like if you're doing some of that, yeah, it, it definitely heats up pretty quick. But again, I don't see the heat as an actual problem, just that it does get hotter than the last generation M1s. Let's talk about battery life. I can definitely notice after a week on this that the battery life is less than my 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro. Now this doesn't surprise me, bigger screen, brighter screen, way, way more powerful chip inside. That just seems par for the course because there's not that much extra room to fit that much bigger of a battery in here. In my daily activities, emails and notes and whatever, it definitely has maybe 10% less battery life than the last machine. So I think Apple's battery life estimate is pretty on point. However, when I'm editing and rendering a video, that's where you can really see the power of this M2 Max chip really eat away at the battery life. So I was editing a video that turned out to be maybe a 15 or 16 minute video. It took me somewhere between three and four hours to edit. And when I got done editing this about 15 minute video, it took three or four minutes to render out. When I started this edit, I had about 80% battery life. I didn't plug it in because I was just curious. Now after three or four hours of actual editing and then rendering the video out, I was left with 18% battery. Now I wasn't really paying attention to the battery throughout this duration, but I do feel like the render is what took the biggest chunk out of the battery. Uh, just all the horsepower that this M2 Max chip has just ripping through video exports. It makes sense it's gonna go through some battery life. And when I'm editing videos, I'm really flying through them. So I think if you're doing really heavy lifting, yeah, the battery life takes a big hit. 
But that's true with any computer, and honestly, even on the last machine, it's like it would have taken way longer to do that edit, and way longer, four times longer in my tests, to do the export on the last machine. So, you know, maybe battery life was is uh, about equal in terms of the amount of work you can get done. You can just get that work done faster on the M2 Max, but that also means that from a time perspective, not a work perspective, you do have less battery. I really miss the touch bar. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the minority here because everyone used to complain about it, but the predictive text when I'm writing notes or emails was awesome. The being able to send an email, like on the touch bar, there'd be a send button on the touch bar. So I could just be typing and hit the send button on the touch bar rather than going down to my mouse and going up to the send icon. Uh, shortcuts on different apps and the predictive text. I, I do genuinely miss the touch bar. Now there were some software glitches that I've had over the past week, so let's talk about those. The first one is when I was trying to set the signature in the mail app, for some reason it just wouldn't let me. Now after a restart it was fine, so there was a little glitch there. And the other glitch that I have had is launching Pro Tools. The first time that I launch it, it is a 50-50 shot if it freezes up on me and I have to force quit and then relaunch it. And the second time I launch it, it's always been fine. This is likely a Pro Tools issue more than, uh, than the MacBook Pro issue, but it is something that I wanted to note because it is a problem that I've been having. So overall, I think this is a great computer. It is an absolute powerhouse and editing videos and content creation on it is an absolute dream. Is it worth the price? This computer was $3,099 for the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Max chip in it and one terabyte hard drive. If you are doing like day-to-day -day activities, office work, spreadsheets and emails and that kind of stuff, this is way, 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 way overkill for like daily activity stuff. Even if you're doing like lots of photo editing and stuff, it's a great machine, but I think it's overkill for that as well. I think the base model with the M2 in it is more than enough for that. If you're doing a ton of really heavy lifting video work, that's where this strength comes in. And if you're doing some in really intense uh, audio production stuff, these are almost unbeatable at this point. So for me personally, I'm cranking out, you know, three-ish, three or four videos a week between my Patreon, this tech channel, and over on my music channel. Uh, and I'm editing lots of photos all the time. This is not my main music studio computer, although it is definitely faster than my Mac studio with the M1 Max in it that I use here in the audio studio, in the music studio. But for me, definitely worth it. Don't forget to subscribe, drop me a comment, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Mm -hmm.